Hi, I'm Alex Kareve, aka IV Crazy, and this is How to Be Successful in FPV Part 3, The Video System. Okay, so now we're getting into the, the meat and potatoes of what is FPV and how to make it work. Well, in order to understand that, we need to understand the video system. So what is it? Luckily, it's nothing fancy. It's simply a hacked security system. Wireless security. It's all around us, and it's so many people use security systems, it's cheap. So what is it? Well, you take a, a CCD camera, such as this, a wireless, just a security camera, and a video transmitter, such as this one, and then you transmit it back to some kind of video receiver, like this, and then view it on a screen, such as this screen, or perhaps the most popular is a set of video goggles. And that's all there is to it. Well, the first thing is, the camera. Which camera should you choose? Well, it's up to you. They come in various different flavors from 420 lines all the way up to around 700 TV lines. Your goggles resolution is usually around 480 to 550 TV lines. So anything greater than 600 TVL, you're not going to see any difference back to your goggles. In this case, this is a 600 TV line camera because I like a crystal clear video or as clear as a wireless security system is gonna get anyway. But that doesn't mean a 400 TV line or a 480 TV line is no good. Those are excellent. I flew with them for years. They're a lot less expensive and they do great. But even 600 TV line is nowhere near as good as HD. You're still not gonna see those power lines until you're right on top of them. So out of the camera comes a video feed and it goes back to a wireless video transmitter. Remember, this is just a wireless security system, that's all. The great thing is, they're designed to go together. You simply wire it right in, done. That's all there is to it. This will take the video feed and then transmit it out an antenna. This will then get transmitted to a receiver station, such as this, which is then hooked up to another video screen, such as these goggles, or a video screen such as this, just a little TV. Now the only thing that you're really gonna be looking at beyond just the camera is what video frequency do I want? Well, there are several different video frequencies out there and the choices aren't always as simple as you might think. We'll start with the most common video frequency, 5.8 gigahertz. 5.8 gigahertz is one of the most common video frequencies for FPVers. Why? Because you can use it with a 2.4 gigahertz radio. There's no problems. And the equipment is small, compact, it's cheap. Very, very small antennas. Now, when going with 5.8 gigahertz for video, circular polarization is a must. Linear polarization will cause many problems due to multipath reflections, which I'll explain in a later video. The great thing again, small antennas. If you jump up to a lower frequency, your antennas start to get a little bit bigger like this. So 5.8, small, cheap, it works. The downsides, you must use circular polarization and there's another problem, the Fresnel zone. If you fly behind an object and your video transmitter can't see your receiver, guess what? Your video is gonna break up. It's gonna get weak or go out completely. You can't fly behind trees, you can't fly behind barns or houses on 5.8 gigahertz. So let's say that's what you want to do. Well, there are other video frequencies to choose. So let's say you want to fly behind objects, so 5.8 gigahertz isn't for you. Well, we'll step one frequency down, one that many people are familiar with, 2.4 gigahertz. The antennas are getting a little bit larger now, but they allow you to fly behind objects. You'll get a little bit of video breakup, but not nearly as bad as 5.8 gigahertz. There is a problem with 2.4 gigahertz. It's on the Wi-Fi band which means if you're around a lot of Wi-Fi routers, inner city, probably best to pick another band. However, there's also 2.3 gigahertz, which is just a step down, which is outside of the Wi-Fi band. So you'll be able to fly no problem around Wi-Fi routers. There's one more problem though. Most of your radio systems are 2.4 gigahertz radio. Do not, and I repeat, do not attempt to fly a 2.4 gigahertz radio with 2.4 gigahertz video. Sure, there are people that claim they've done it, and we have a name for those types of people. Lucky. 
very lucky. Please don't try it. This is stressing your equipment to the limit. If you're gonna fly 2.4 gigahertz or 2.3 gigahertz video, please choose either 72 megahertz for control or 35 megahertz or 40 megahertz for the European guys or 433, you know, your UHF or LRS systems. But there's more to choose from than just 5.8 and 2.4. There's also 1.2 gigahertz. Now the antennas are starting to get significantly larger, like this big. The greatest thing about 1.2 gigahertz, there's nothing on it. Typically, this is the quietest band for noise and outside interference. It's strict, it's basically 1.3 gigahertz is given to amateur radio operators. So this might be the cleanest video band for you. The other nice thing is the low frequency bends around objects great. So you'll be able to see through buildings and trees at a fair distance. The downsides are one, well, your antennas start to get fairly large like this. There's also one other problem. That 2.4 gigahertz radio probably isn't a good idea. Why is that? Well, it's what's called a harmonic. The second harmonic of 1280 hits right in the 2.4 gigahertz band. So you might need a filter in order to fly 1280 megahertz or 1256 with a 2.4 gigahertz radio. There's also one more problem. Your video will far exceed your ability to control your airplane. So just because you have good video doesn't mean you're running out of control distance. So if you're flying 1280 megahertz and keeping it close, 2.4 gigahertz radio is okay so long as you use a filter. There's one last frequency you can choose, and that's 900 megahertz. 900 megahertz plays well with all radio systems, 2.4, 72, 35, even long range radio systems. There's, the only problems are one, the antennas are now very large, and there's also a problem with these, cell phones. You see, cell phones, the G3 band is 900 megahertz. So if you're near a cell tower, chances are it's gonna knock you out of commission. So if you're in, an, if you're in a rural area, 900 megahertz and your 2.4 gigahertz radio will work fine. However, that might not be the case. So which video frequency is right for you? That's for you to decide. Again, 5.8 gigahertz, is great, small, cheap, compact. Problem, you need circular polarization and you can't fly too far behind objects. 2.4 or 2.3 gigahertz, you know, you cannot fly your 2.4 gigahertz radio, but you can use now use linear polarization if you want, or circular, the antennas are a little bit bigger, but usually manageable, but you cannot use your 2.4 gigahertz radio. Any other radio frequency will work. Then there's 1280 megahertz. You can use linear or circular polarization, has great punch to get through buildings, trees, and objects, but to fly with 2.4 gigahertz, you're going to need a filter. You need to put a filter on the 1280 megahertz system. And the other problem is, is you'll have great video as you watch your airplane crash behind an object because your video will far exceed your ability to control the aircraft. And then finally, of course, 900 megahertz. The largest of the antennas can be flown with any radio system you want, but not so good in an area that has a lot of cell phone towers, so inner city. This has been an IB Crazy tutorial, and keep your wings in the sky.